so she was like, hi, yes, I have some news about your halter. And I was said, okay. We noticed a lot of irregular beats. The cardiologist is concerned and we would like to put you on a new medication. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Margaret Ellis Raymond. I am an author and I was born with tricuspid atresia. This is my channel Unbeatable where I talk about my CHD experiences. Uh, and today's video is a long time coming. <laughs> so first, welcome to my new studio, quote unquote. It's, I, I'm, I'm actually in my closet. I recently moved and so this is the best I can do <laughs> at the moment. I have some lovely CHD books that I'm currently trying to read. I'm kind of halfway through this one. <laughs> We're getting there. And then I have some photos of when I was in the hospital. I would love for this not to be my normal background and I'd like to change it up every so often. So if there are people in the CHD community that are artists and want to share some CHD related artwork, uh, send me it and then I'll put it up here and put a little name tag and put it in the description of my video uh, so that anyone else can check out your artwork. So my PO box is in the description of this video and I would love to have some amazing artwork featuring um, those in the CHD community. So feel free to share. So what happened? In the span of like three years, I've had three different cardiologists. My first cardiologist was my cardiologist since I was like 12 and she was great. Um, I was on 2.5, I think it was that, milligrams of lisinopril and then a baby aspirin. That's what I had known for a really long time. She was a great cardiologist. She moved on to a new position. So, you know, they send you a letter and they're like, bye and I'm like oh my god what do I do who do I find what do I, like how do I function right turns out they're hiring a new cardiologist in in the practice so they're like well, here's this guy you want to meet him and I was like okay great so I met him and he was great I and you know he didn't change anything of my medication he didn't it was kind of like nothing had changed it was just a different cardiologist and I felt like I'm an adult now Something in my day to day probably should have changed for my heart condition. I don't know. Is it different for adults? And so I really wanted to see an adult cardiologist. And so I asked, is this guy an adult cardiologist? Turns out he's a, what is it? Pediatric cardiologist. So they s deal more with the structure of the heart and like the initial surgeries and all of that. And so once you're an adult with CHD, you kind of need an adult CHD cardiologist, which is what I was looking for. And so I called the office and I was like, do you have one? And they were like, no. And I was like, why? And they were like, we're Maine. And I was like, oh. So Maine just doesn't have a ton of adult cardiologists. And so eventually we got one. And I was like, great, sign me up. So I go and I meet him. It was the most awkward <laughs> meeting ever. The way that I remember it was, so this was back in February, so it's been a while and I needed a hot minute to just like not be on the internet about anything. I was just like, leave me alone. So I've been MIA for a while. I get into the appointment and the nurse, uh, the, the medical assistant, that's what it was, the medical assistant was very nice. She was chatting with me, it was perfectly normal, and then she got quiet and started just listening to my heart. The door opens <laughs> and he walks in. And I'm pretty sure he's gonna like find this video eventually in his lifetime and he'll be like, oh, oops. But I don't think he said hi. I can't recall. I'm pretty sure he didn't say anything. Walks in, doesn't really look at me, um, and then just pulls out his stethoscope and lifts up the back of my shirt and starts listening to my heart along with the medical assistant. So I, awkward as, I'll get out. I'm like, this is really weird. And so I just start laughing, like uncontrollably laughing. I gotta calm down and I'm like, sorry, hold on. And I eventually like stop and get it together. But it just was so weird. <laughs> I don't remember him coming in and saying hi. That would have made it much less awkward. But anyway, so, <laughs> so after he finished listening to my heart, they both finished, they put their stethoscopes away. He sits down on a wheelie stool and goes, hi, I'm Dr. Blah Blah. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Okay, with any doctor who's like really good, I'm pretty sure that they've heard this before and maybe he has too. Um, people skills are not necessarily their forte. And so 
after that, we had a discussion about how I'm doing and he walked me through what my heart looks like. And then we get to medication and he goes, okay. And this is how he said it point blank. He goes, I'm not sure why you're on lisinopril. That has been found to not be helpful for certain patients with your condition. And I don't know why you're still on a baby aspirin. So we're gonna take both of those off your prescription list and we're gonna give you 10 milligrams of Xeralto. I always wanna say cilantro. <laughs> it's not cilantro, it's Xeralto. Starts with an X. And so I was like, ooh, okay, a more intense blood thinner. And I was like, so what's the difference? Like, what's the, why make this change? Like, why didn't the other cardiologist do this? And he was like, well, the other cardiologist that you had probably was still looking at research that indicated that lisinopril was good for patients with your condition, and it is to some extent. However, for you specifically, I don't see that it's helping. And so we want to put you on a uh, Xeralto. I wish he had said, and here's why. But instead, that's where he left it. I just wanted an explanation of like, what Xeralto is going, what is that going to do for me? So in that appointment, he goes, all right, we're going to put you on a halter. You're saying that you're having weird heartbeats. Let's put you on a halter. So this was my first time with the new halter monitor. So it was very different than what I was used to. Like I'm used to like the eight seven or how many pads there are in the wires and it basically looks like a freaking bomb that you're strapping to like your belt uh, or hanging it around your neck uh, so that's what I was used to and, and then they're like look at this cool new one Maine's finally doing an upgrade and it was this little thing with two little sticky pads and you stick it on over your chest and so that was cool I really enjoyed switching to something less uh, bomb like it was fantastic. I really enjoyed public outings with it because I could easily cover it up and it stuck really well. Um, also, the lady who put it on really scratched like living crap out of my skin uh, to stick it on there properly. That was cool. I really enjoyed switching to something less uh, bomb like. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed public outings with it because I could easily cover it up and it stuck really well. Um, also, the lady who put it on really scratched like living crap out of my skin uh, to stick it on there properly. So for men, when you have a halter monitor, shave the area of your chest where they're going to put it because they're going to come at you with this like sandpaper-like material and just scratch the crap out of your skin to make it stick better. So anyway, and I had it for like two weeks because I was very concerned about my heartbeats and I was noticing it a lot more. And I was like, I've never noticed this before. This is weird. I need you to take a look at this and tell me if this is normal and what we're going to do. Like I was going worst case scenario. I'm going to have to be on a new medication. My heart's going crazy or I'm in a ton of stress. I mean, which I was, you know, COVID. And so they eventually got back to me. So she was like, hi, yes, I have some news about your halter. And I was said, okay, um, I'm touring an apartment right now. Is this like is there something pressing that you need to talk to me about right now like could you call me back like in a few days like I just didn't want to deal with it I was avoiding this situation so much I just didn't want to because I knew something was off and she said no I really think we got to talk about this now and I was like Oh my god. I was like, okay, so here I am standing in an apartment getting a tour with my best friend. So the nurse practitioner, whoever it was, is on the phone with me and she says, we noticed a lot of irregular beats. Um, it's where the cardiologist is concerned and we would like to put you on a new medication. I don't even remember what the medication was. I think it starts with an M, but it's to help with irregular beats, I think. I don't know. She also mumbled in the conversation. So I had two reasons really not to pay attention. One, my anxiety and two, just she wasn't clear. This was in April and I procrastinated with all my anxiety so much that I didn't do anything about it. Neither did I do anything about the Xeralto until July. And July comes around, I have my MRI cardiologist calls me up. This is the same guy that I met in person who was awkward and couldn't give me a, an answer about the Xeralto and why it was better. 
he calls me up and he was perfect on the phone. So I was like, okay, this is definitely like something I don't know about him, but now I'm learning. He's just better communicating over the phone. Perfect. That's fine. So I drill him and I ask him tons of questions. I was like, why is Zeralta better? He finally gives me an answer, like immediately, like he had it. And his answer was that the Zeralto is going to do more benefits for me and is a, a basically like a higher dose of aspirin. It kind of does similar things to aspirin, but it's better. And so I was like, okay, there's, there's a good reason right there. It's, it's if the shot of having a stroke, if that's increased potentially by just being on aspirin and lisinopril, potentially for me, if that's the case, and Zeralto is gonna give me a shot at lowering that percentage or that chance, then okay, I'll take it. So lowering risk of, of a, a stroke sounds good to me. Let's go with Zeralto. So I made that decision on the phone with him. He then says, your MRI came back fantastic. Do you have any other questions? I said, yes. Someone from your office, I gave the name, title, she called me and said that I should be on this medication. I gave him the name. And he goes, hold on. I hear him clicking on his computer. And he goes, yeah, mm -mm. no, we don't want you to take that. That would be really bad. And I was like, what? what, what do you mean? And he goes, it looks like she called the wrong person. I'm gonna have a chat with her. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? So here I am being told I should take like this really intense medication that probably wouldn't have been good for me. I don't know how she messed that up because like you're supposed to have the patient's file up on the screen and then call that number. So maybe she called the number, but she was like one digit off, but she was still looking at the screen for the other patient. However, when I called, I thought she said my name. So I was like, how do you get anyway, whatever. So it happened. Then the next crazy thing that happened to me was I moved. One week after moving, we went on a camping trip with friends and family. Um, and we were washing dishes in the stream, which probably we shouldn't have done. And so when we got back from the camping trip, I was like, why do I have intense diarrhea? What is going on? So I had culture samples sent to my, my PCP. So they do all the testing. They're like, everything looks fine. You didn't pick up a parasite on your camping trip. You're good. And I was like, well, I'm not good. Something's going on. My boyfriend and I were talking and we were like, well, what if it's the water? And so we did a home kit test thing on the water in our new apartment. And lo and behold, the chlorine is like 10 times what it should be, which indicates probably that the water system in our building is old and disgusting and they are hiding it by adding crap tons of chlorine so we're gonna have to call the water district um and i stopped drinking the water here and i'm on bottled water we got a filter for the sink i haven't tried that yet we're gonna see if the filter works uh we'll see what happens so far so far it's solid <laughs> ah, i'm punny okay Moving on. I think that's about it. For me, it was a lot to go through because I just haven't, I haven't had surgery since I was a, a child. So with everything changing, it's just been like a lot to, to handle. And uh, even though it hasn't changed that much, for me, it feels like a lot. And uh, I know that surgery is inevitable in the future. And so I'm getting ready for that, which is fun. Um, I don't know what the surgery is going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be like a catheterization and everyone is going to hate me for saying it's a surgery, but in my head, like it is as bad as a surgery because I just haven't gone through as much as everyone else in the adult CHD community because I've been so good up until now. Um, so I'm just a little freaked out for when it does get more intense than this past summer. So. Thanks for listening to my rant and hopefully it gave you a um, peace of mind to know that you're not the only adult CHD patient out there who has difficulty handling changes and, you know, potential issues coming up with, um, with your condition. Send me artwork. I want this background to change constantly. So, okay. Anyway.
keep being your unbeatable self and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>